good morning students students as i just started a new chapter in live class reproduction how do organism reproduce today i just discuss and i revise a topic sexual reproduction in plants so but before started i want to give you introduction about this topic that what is reproduction it is a process by which organism produce young one of their own kind and multiply in number it is not essential for organism to stay alive as is nutrition respiration excretion but still reproduction is most important feature of all living organism because it is important for the continuation of a species now what is the need of reproduction reproduction is essential for the continuation of life as living beings are not immortal but they are able to maintain their existence for a millions of year from the time of their origin because they produce their copy by reproduction second is for preservation of species because organism of species produce many new organism very similar to themselves the number increases generation after generation this causes increase in the size of population and helps in the existence of species third is for replacement of dead individual as you know new individual added to the population compensate for the loss by death next point is regarding role in evolution reproduction introduces variation in the offspring and also helps in the transfer of these variation into their offspring thus reproduction play important role in evolution reproductive organism create new individual that look very much like themselves organisms look similar because their body designs are similar different member of species look similar because their body design is similar it means all of them possess the same blueprint for similar body design the same blueprint in all member of species comes through interbreeding like they have received their hereditary material having same information about body design encoded in it their hereditary material is copied and then transmitted to next generation during reproduction through gametes and the hereditary material maintain continuity between the successive generations and the gametes form the physical basis through which that material is passed on the member of the next generation and the reproduction is the means of transmission so dear students who is holding our body design do organism create exact copy of themselves yes the hereditary material store blueprint for all body structure and this blueprint hereditary material is dna informations are encoded in the sequence of nucleotides in dna dna molecule contain all information to make specific protein which is turned from enzyme to control chemical reactions in the body these chemical reactions govern the metabolism of body and produce specific characters thus for transmitting the characters to next generation dna form its copies to transfer to new formed dna cell so dna in the cell is the nucleus is the information source for making protein if information is changed different proteins will be formed different protein will lead to a different body design so basic event in the reproduction is the creation of dna and this create dna by the concept of dna replication like it consists of dna, DNA during the dna replication dna form exact copy of its own but mistake many in this process of replication occur there occur some changes called mutations and these two cells receiving copy of dna from the parent cell have certain variations these variations are called mutations it can be small it can be large thus all reproductive gametes may not carry exactly the same characters due to mistakes in the dna replication there is an introduction of variations and these variations are passed to next generation through the process of reproduction so creation of dna copy bring about variations 
हाँ जी फ्रॉम द अब डिस्कशन इट इज क्लियर डेट फर्स्ट स्टेप इन द रिप्रोडक्शन इज द रेप्लीकेशन ऑफ डी एन ए सम वेरिएशन द हेरिडिटी मटीरियल आर ऑफन इंट्रोड्यूस एट ईच डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन इन मल्टी सेलुलर ऑर्गेनिज्म ड्यूरिंग सेक्शन रिप्रोडक्शन मिलियन ऑफ डी एन ए कॉपीज आर फॉर्म ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ वेरियड गैमिट्स एंड इंडिविजुअल्स आर फॉर्म एंड दिस चांस ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ वेरिएशन कैन बी टाइप ऑफ डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन Like these variation can be introduced during the DNA replication, at the time of gamete formation, and at the time of fertilization. At any time, these variations can be formed, and these variations, which provide suitable characters, enable the organism for better survival. Such changes, which power an organism to survive successfully in some changed environment, are called pre-adaptations. Some of the variation. is not good like it might be so drastic that the new dna copy cannot work with the cellular apparatus it inherited such a new born cell will simply die now we will discuss about mode of reproduction there are two mode of reproduction one is asexual reproduction and one is sexual reproduction in sexual reproduction we will discuss in separate video in detail but here i'm just going to discuss about little bit introduction about asexual reproduction when the reproduction occur without the formation and the fusion of gamete it is called asexual reproduction because it does not involve special cell called sex cell in asexual reproduction only one parent is needed to produce a new organism now we discuss about what are the characteristics of asexual reproduction it is a uniparental like one parent is involved it does not involve fusion of gametes all the cell divisions are mitotic or amitotic it is a method of rapid multiplication daughter organisms are genetically identical to the parent and it is mostly found in the lower organisms or unicellular organisms now there are different mode of reproduction first is fusion second is fragmentation third is regeneration fourth is budding fifth is vegetative propagation and next is spore formation and these all these we will discuss in a separate video or in live class reproduction sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which a male gamete fuses with a female gamete to produce a zygote which ultimately develops to form a new individual sexual reproduction is a reproduction that involves two individual belonging to two different sexes male and female these are the two sexes that take part in the mode of reproduction sexual reproduction involves sex cells these sex cells are called gametes and they are made in reproductive organ in sexual reproduction i already told you that male gamete come in contact with female gamete fuses that in their cytoplasm and nuclei join together to form a zygote zygote grow into individual like we will discuss sexual reproduction in plants as well as sexual reproduction in animals uh first of all now we will discuss about certain characteristics of sexual reproduction like but gametes which i discussed that gametes are formed in sex organ it involve reduction or meiotic division meiosis meiosis means reduction division gametes have half number of chromosome of the parent cell characteristics of sexual reproduction it is a biparental two parents are involved one is male one is female in plant it involve separate male and female reproductive organs gametes are formed gametes are formed by meiotic division which are haploid fusion of male and female gamete from two different parents from two different parents take place as a result of fertilization zygote is formed zygote under repeating meiotic mitotic division to form a daughter organism and then daughter organism is genetically different from 
both the parents would resemble in the certain features. But the sexual reproduction, it brings about variation. Now, what is the significance of sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction, it results in the new combination of gene brought in zygote. This increases genetic variation and diversity of character. Second, it maintains chromosome number in future generation. Next, variation form a favor evolution and it plays an important role in origin of new species. Like reproduction is essential for continuation of species. Now imagine what have happened if organism had not reproduced. No type, no life. So now, first of all, we will just start sexual reproduction in plants. So let's start a sexual reproduction in plants. Now please tell me which is a reproductive part of plant. Yes, very good. Flower. Flower is a reproductive part of plant. Now we will discuss about parts of flower. Here you can see the structure of the flower. Here you can see flower is born at the tip of stalk called pedicle. Pedicle expands into a fleshy swollen upper portion called thalamus or also called receptacle. All the flower parts are attached to the thalamus. Flower consists of four main parts. Calyx called sepals, corolla called petals, and drosium called stamen, gynoecium called pistic, and carp. Calyx and corolla are accessory poles, like these are like these are not reproductive parts, and androsium and gynoecium are reproductive parts of plant. So let's first of all discuss about calyx. Calyx is the outermost hole of flower. It is formed of five green colored leaf like parts called sepals and the function of the sepal is to protect the flower in bud condition. Now come to corolla. Corolla is also called petals. It is a form of green colored. They lie inner to calyx. They are found in various color. They, they attract the insects for pollination. Androsium, also called stamen, it is the male reproductive part of flower. They just lie within the corolla. There may be several stamen in the flower. Each stamen consists of two parts. One is anther and one is filament. Anther consists of four pollen sac. Each pollen sac bear a powdery mass called pollen. And pollen contain pollen grains. And these pollen grains are male gametes. Now come to a gynoecium. Gynoecium is a female reproductive part of flower. It is formed of one or more carpels. Carpels lie in the center of the flower and the flask shaped structure. Carpel is made up of three parts. Stigma, style, ovary. Stigma. Stigma is the upper part of carpel. It receives pollen grains. Male gametes during pollination. Style is a long part of carpal which connects stigma with the ovary. And about ovary, it is the basal part of carpal. Ovary wears ovules. Female gametes called ovum is produced in the ovule. Ovule may be unilocular where there is only one chamber or it is multilocular when, when there are many chamber. Okay. Now, beta, next is Let's discuss every part one by one in detail. Here you can see a sepals and petals are non-reproductive parts. Petals have a bright color that attract insects for pollination and sepal is a leaf-like structure protect flower in its bud condition. Stamen is a male reproductive organ which contains sperm. Like it consists of anther and filament. Pollens are inside the anther which contain 
two male gametes. Pistil is a female reproductive organ which contains ovum. Ovum means egg. It consists of three parts: stigma, style, ovary. An ovule is inside the ovary, which contains one female gamete, or you can say ovum. Now, here is description of every part is given. You can read out. Sepal. What is the function of sepals? Protects unopened flower petals, brightly colored insect pollinated flowers to attract insects, anther, it produces and releases male sexes, pollen grains, stigma, top of the female part of flower which collect pollen grains, ovary produces the female sex cell, ovule contain the female sex cell found inside the ovary. Now comes to next concept that is the types of flower. There are two types of flower, unisexual flower, bisexual flower. Now first of all let's discuss about unisexual flower. About unisexual flower, flower may be unisexual when it contain either stamen or pistil. Like examples are papaya, watermelon. Bisexual flower Bisexual flowers are flowers in which male and female reproductive parts are present in the same flower. Example, mustard and hibiscus. These are examples of bisexual flower. Now, we have to discuss about pollination. What is pollination? Pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower. It's called Pollination. Pollination is of two types. One is self pollination, one is cross pollination. First of all, we will discuss about self pollination. Self pollination is a transfer of pollen grains occur in the same flower. Or you can say it is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower or another flower of a same plant. Example, it most of the time it take place in bisexual plant. Example, groundnut and garden balsam. Next is cross pollination. It is a transfer of pollen grains from anther from one plant to stigma of another flower of another plant but of the same species. It is possible in both the unisexual as well as bisexual flower. Examples are China rose, marigold, maize. These are cross pollination may be completed with the help of insects, birds, wind, and water. Now comes to the agents of the cross pollination. Cross pollination occur by insects. How? Here there are most um, steps are there. First of all, pollens from stamen stick to a bee as it visits a flower to collect food. Bee travel to another plant of the same type. Then pollens on bee stick to a pistil of flower on another plant. In this, male organ is just passed to a female. Fertilization take place. This is a cross pollination by insects. Now, what are the adaptation for pollination? In this, these are very very important. We have to discuss about features of the insect pollinated flower. In features of the insect pollinated flower, petals are very light, large, and brightly colored to attract insects. Present nectar is a present, and to visit the flower and push past at stamen to get a nectar. Pollen grains are moderate. Insects transfer pollen grains efficiently with a high chance of successful for pollination. Pollen grains are large, sticky, spiky to attach insects and be carried away. And third, insect flowers stiff and firmly attached to a brush against insects. Stigma inside a flower sticky, so pollen grains stick to it when insect brushes past. Now here you can see the diagram where everything is given which I discussed with you the 
features of insect pollinated flowers. Now we will discuss about cross pollination by wind. Here you can see the diagram where we will discuss about features of the wind pollinated. <coughs> Sorry. Wind pollinated flower consists of petals that are very small, dull, often green or brown in color. Nectar is most of the time sent or nectar it is absent. No need to waste energy producing these as no need to attract insects. Number of pollen grains large. Most pollen grains are not transferred to another flower so more to produce better than the chance of some successful pollination occurring. Pollen grains are smooth, small, light, so they are easily blown by wind. Anther, outside the flower, swimming blues a long filaments to release pollen grain easily. Stigma, outside flower, feathery to catch drifting pollen grains. So, insect pollinated flower produce smaller amount of large heavier pollen grains that contain spikes on the outside so they are better able to stick to the insects. On the other hand, wind pollinated flower produce large amount of small light weighted pollen grains that are usually smooth. Here the diagram shown pollen grains from three different species of plant as they appeared under microscope. One, two, three. Now you have to just tell me which pollen grains are involved in insect pollination. One and two, one only, two and three, three only. This assignment. Now, next concept is fertilization, a process in which sperm fuses with egg. Let's discuss in detail. Hanji, first of all, what happens? Fertilization, fusion of male and female gamete, male nucleus from pollen grain with egg nucleus to form zygote. This is called fertilization. As a result of pollination, pollen grain is deposited on the stigma of carpal. It grows into a pollen tube. After here you can see after the pollens land on stigma, tube go out of pollen grain and travel through style to reach pore grain. Is that clear? So in this way pollen tube is then male gamete. The pollen tube contains two male gamete. It releases two male gamete into embryo sac. Okay, male gamete, one male gamete travels to tube and reaches to the ovule where female gamete is waiting then male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote and this fusion of the male gamete with egg to form zygote is called syngamy. Is that clear? Now what happens after post fertilization changes? Formation of embryo zygote divides several times to form embryo within the ovule and embryo gradually develop within the ovule. Now conversion of ovary and ovule into fruit and ovule develop a tough coat converted into seed. Ovary grow rapidly ripen to form fruit. Meanwhile petals, sepals, stamen, style, stigma, vesival and fall off. Now germination of seed we discuss. In germination, seed contain future plant or embryo which develop into seedling under appropriate conditions. This process is known as germination. Like plumule is a future plant, radical is a future root, plumule is a future shoot and cotyledonous helps to store food. Now comes to a uh, like let's as we have discussed about fertilization. Like I just told you that that pollen tube container two male gametes which releases two male gametes into embryo sac. I just discussed that one of the male gametes fuses with the egg to form zygote and ultimately fertilization take place and form them. But now what about the other male gamete? There was two male gametes. The other male gametes fuses with the two polar nuclei to 
to form endosperm and this fusion of one male gamete with two polar nuclei is called triple fusion is that clear so in ovary two fusion take place these are syngamic and triple fusion and these two processes are called double fertilization now what is the function of endosperm to provide nourishment to a developing embryo so till now we have discussed about sexual reproduction in plant very soon we will discuss about sexual reproduction in animals goodbye